Hey everyone, my name is Deep Bataria, and I'm currently a Pulmonary and Critical Care Fellow at Mount Sinai St. Luke's, Mount Sinai West, and Mount Sinai Beth Israel. In this next video, we're going to be talking about target dyssynchrony. So let's get started. So with, when it comes to target dyssynchrony, there's issue on how the breath is delivered, and particularly it's issues with the flow rate. So here's a question for you all. If the patient is flow starved in volume assist control mode, which waveform will you see it reflected in? Why don't you pause the video now? Okay, so the answer to this is you will see it reflected on the pressure time scalar, the dependent variable. So remember, in volume AC, the flow is your target variable. It's preset by you, the operator, and it cannot be manipulated. However, if you're in volume AC, the pressure scalar will be affected in target dyssynchrony. So let's take a look. So here you have a pressure and flow. Few questions for you. What's your target and your mode of ventilation? What's the issue? Which phase is the dyssynchrony? Is it a trigger dyssynchrony, target dyssynchrony, or cycle dyssynchrony? What's your differential diagnosis? And how do you fix it? So why don't you pause the video now? Okay, so what's the target variable? Taking a look at my flow scale art, I can see that it looks like a decelerating ramp. That's something the operator has set. So therefore, I can say that flow is my target variable. As a result, this mode of ventilation is volume control ventilation. So what's the issue here? So let's take a look. So reading each scale out left to right, let's start with the pressure. So here the breath is triggered. So there's no issue with trigger. However, after the breath is triggered, you can see there's a negative deflection. Same is true with the second, third, and consecutive breaths. So the issue is not trigger, but it's target. Now what does a negative deflection in the pressure scale R mean? Now negative deflection means inspiration. The patient is inspiring. So as a result, this is a target dyssynchrony. There's only one type of target dyssynchrony, and that's flow starvation. So the issue is, how do we fix this? So a lot is set in the name. The patient is flow starved. They're inspiring excessively during the breath because the flow that they are receiving is not enough. For example, this patient's flow is set to 40. It's not enough for the patient. So how do we fix it? You have two options. The first option is, what if we increase this flow to 80 liters per minute? You, the operator, have the ability to change the maximum flow rate. So if you changed it and increased the flow, to meet the demands of the patient, and the pressure scalar improved and the dyssynchrony went away, you've solved your issue. So the first way is to increase your flow rate. And the second scenario is, let's say you increase the flow rate to 80. However, this target dyssynchrony still persists. That means you've increased the flow rate, you've seen no response in your target dyssynchrony. So what's the other option? Well, the other option is instead of flow being your independent variable, what if it's your dependent variable? That way the patient can take inspiratory flow as high as they want. If flow is your dependent variable, that means that pressure would be your independent variable. How do you make pressure your independent variable? Well, the way we would do that is switching from volume control ventilation to pressure control ventilation. So that's one of two ways of addressing target dyssynchrony changing the flow rate and increasing it, or switching the mode of ventilation from volume control to pressure control ventilation. So another question for you, can you have flow starvation in pressure control? And the answer is no, because flow will be your dependent variable. The flow can go as high as the patient demands. So that's it for target dyssynchrony. Join me in my next video where I address cycle dyssynchrony. Thanks a lot.